Hi, I'm Mike. I'm, again, I'm here at Windy City Rails, and I'm uh, talking with Evan Light, who runs the Ruby D Camp, or you created the uh, Ruby D Camp. Or, well, anyway, can you tell me a little bit about Ruby D Camp and, and what, you're, what you're doing there? Well, first, hi, because I'm a goofball. Um, okay, so yeah, D Camp. I created it, I guess, in uh, 08 for <laughs> a lot of different reasons. Um, I was frustrated with. I, th I was sitting in the audience at, at RailsConf, I guess it was in 08, and Chad Fowler was giving a presentation. He was giving his keynote, mm -hmm. and he made one remark. He said, I don't do well in classroom environments. And so I instantly blocked everything else he was saying after that and thought, right. well, I don't really either. I don't imagine most of the people here either. Why are we listening to this? Yeah. And so I just kept thinking about that after that event, and I realized, well, then... I mean, we've got this whole conference model backwards. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have one person standing at the front of the room all the time. The teacher in front of a, a class. Te teacher in front of a seminar, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes we have genuine experts at the front of the room. Often we just have someone who maybe just learned something and want to share about it. So my question is really, what makes these people so qualified to stand on the stage? Mm -hmm. And when you reflect on it, um, and, and this is awfully ironic, maybe hypocritical, I'm talking about this at a conference that I'm speaking at, right. but um, the, the speakers at conferences are chosen by a very select few individuals, the people who run these conferences, mm -hmm. for any number of reasons. Not necessarily because of some unique special competence, not necessarily um, for a reason that necessarily behooves the audience, but it behooves those people who are running the conference. So maybe better to instead of having a, if you will, an elitist group or an elite group, an exclusive group, choose who speaks at events that everyone should come gather together and share what's interesting to them, what's important to them, and what they want to learn about, and then grow together as a group, collectively. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a very interesting perspective about the elitist. I, I have to elitism give a is a strong word. I, but but but, but it, it's it's the um, I, I've I've been guilty of it myself. Looking I'll, at the I'll, list, use, I'll use a different word or a different phrase. Hero worship. Yeah, well, or thinking about who's going to bring people into the conference. Marketing. And that's that's that was the aspect I was going uh, to go at. Is that I know I've I've sat down and looked and said. You know, this person is really well known. This person is going to be somebody that people are going to want to see, and they're going to bring more audience and, and make more value for the conference. And which is a silly thing, especially for a free con. Well, this is a paid conference. I can't speak to that, but uh, doing free events, it's you know, wh who who am I serving? Well, D Camp wasn't originally free. The first year, it was more form, a little more formal. It it had the basic format I described, but it was a hundred dollars because we had it at a hotel venue. Mm -hmm. um, and that added all kinds of complication. And it was Chris Williams from the JavaScript community uh, who had participated in the first DCAMP fighter call. Uh, actually, he sponsored, come to think of it. Um, he said, why not hold it at a campground? And that just hit me like a, a gold brick in the side of the head. Yeah. Uh, it's that the raised, word camp. <laughs> well, it, no, it's not just the word camp. It's just I'm a bit of a tree-hugger, tree-hugging yeah. tree hippie. And, Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we did it at a, uh, a state campground. Uh, Manassas it was a the, the, the I don't say Manassas Battlefield Campground, I guess, or the Battlefield Park has a campground. Mm -hmm. um, and we only had maybe twelve people who stayed overnight. But for those of us who stayed overnight during the camp, it was a hell of an experience. Mm -hmm. Then I heard about this uh, role playing game group that uh, a few friends of mine participate in, and they have a, a yearly gathering at this cabin camp. Um, and I went and investigated. It actually has a cell phone signal, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the space and thought, this is just magnificent. The price is $800 for four nights. Yeah. It has a professional kitchen, a walk-in freezer, a sleeping room for 78 people. Right. How much more perfect? Oh, and it had plenty of electricity. We didn't blow any breakers for two years. We haven't blown breakers for two years now. Yeah. How much more perfect could it get? It was so cheap. Yeah, and, and it, it gets people out of their element, and it get, and it's just far enough from civilization. Prince William Forest Park in Virginia, it's about maybe 40 miles, 30, 40 miles outside DC. Mm -hmm. It's hard for people to leave. It's right. just inconvenient enough for people to go home that even the locals tend not to want to. So we have three days, three and three and a half days or so of people stuck together in the same place. Yeah, and that can be really powerful. Yeah. 
Well, and also being out in, in the the greenery is it's got to be uh, enough of a disruption of what your typical mental state is inside of a building inside of artificial lighting. You know, you're you're out and there's green and there's there's the big blue see, room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that, yeah. That's right, a comic strip, but. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. The big blue room that is the great outdoors, but yeah. it, it it sounds like it it kind of breaks um, uh, routine, it breaks um, a rigid expectation of, of how a conference should be. And that's what we try to do across the board. Okay. And uh, do you, do you do anything with uh, uh, trying to bring in local user groups or anything like that? Well, uh, at first, I tried to market, if you will. Mm -hmm. I sent emails out to user groups up and down the mid-Atlantic mm -hmm. um, and I because I lived in the metro area, I lived in Northern Virginia most of my mm -hmm. life I knew a lot of people in that area so I would talk to them the most in the first few years was mostly local people but I'd always had the intent to try to make it big, not necessarily in size but in terms of reach because again I feel like the model the conference model just doesn't seem right mm -hmm. especially for a group as diverse as the Ruby community I do think that we are somewhat unique and special snowflakes as a community, for, for better or worse, mm -hmm. in that I feel like Ruby is a very expressive language. It tends to attract slightly unusual people, um, maybe a little bit smarter than the average bear, but maybe you could say that about anyone who goes to a conference, mm -hmm. and or people who are more interested than the average bear, people who know more than the average bear. And if that's the case, why are we just lecturing at them? Right. Um, Though I already said that. Yeah, well, it's 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 an interesting perspective. Is it's knowledge is, is just uh, is, is is just it's just knowledge until you put it into action. And a lot of times we come into a conference and we get knowledge, but no action. But one of the other aspects that um, troubling me about the conference environment is a lot of people. I found this about myself mm -hmm. years ago. A lot of people go to the conferences not for the the, pre the presentations, because you see, we were talking about this a moment ago before we rolled camera. You see people with laptops open typing away all the time. They're not really paying attention. So why are they there? They're not really there for the presentations. They're there for the other people right. or what sometimes we call the hallway track. So the idea then was, well, let's make something that's essentially starting as a hallway track. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had a few other people egg me to go in certain directions. I was originally thinking something that was less controlled than a conference, mm -hmm. but even then I was still holding on just a little to some control. I have very very little control over just setting the stage right now for the right. event. We go so far as to bring supplies, which I used to be solely responsible for acquiring them. Now we have so many people who participate that I'm just making sure people are talking and I might not even have to go fetch anything this year, which I usually do. Um, so let me back up. Really, the whole metaphor is stone soup. Okay. Uh, the old Everybody stone keeps... Or I'll let you tell See, the Okay, story. so the, the story of the Stone Soup, I guess, it started in France during some mm -hmm. war or another. Some soldiers walk into a town, and they have nothing to eat at all, and the people in the town are very poor, but the soldiers say, uh, the soldiers come up with this idea of, well, I'm, we're going to get this big pot, put some water in it, and we have this magic stone that will make the food taste really good, but if you put a little bit of something else in there, it'll make it even better. Yeah. And then, so the townspeople started contributing a little bit, a little bit, a little bit at a time by, as individuals, and the next thing they had this magnificent meal. Decamp works exactly like that. The first year, or I guess the second year when we were really in the woods, I went, went to Costco, loaded up my, my father's Subaru Outback because my car can't load as much stuff. Um, bought all the supplies at Costco, dragged them out there, dragged and my father, dragged his grill out there. Um, I did a lot of lugging around, but, mm -hmm. but what happened on site is that I would start to do some work and then people would say, oh, Evan's doing this by himself, let's help. Yeah. And then before I knew it, I could just step back and they would do it. Yeah. And Whereas this year we've evolved to the point where occasionally someone would walk up to me and say, do you think I should do so-and-so? I'm like, do you want to? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and sometimes, even better, someone would just go into the kitchen and just start cooking because they were hungry. <laughs> Great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I don't want to have to do any of this. I, I shouldn't have to do any of this. I try not to be a benevolent dictator. I want people to just do things together. Benevolent, benevolent facilitator. Well, that's the goal. Yeah. That, that's the goal, and I, I, think, I'm mo I think we as a community are mostly there now, and I say community because DCAMP has a tendency to draw a lot of previous attendees back. Um, I'm not the only one who's very passionate about it, I just started mm -hmm. that way, but I guess you could say uh, I've sold or they've sold each other right. on the idea that it, it's not just my idea now, it's our idea. Yeah. And so um, this year I have people coordinating on 
what supplies to buy, what they are going to cook. Because mm -hmm. we've got some really amazing people when it comes to making food. Yeah, I think about that a little too much. <laughs> but, but really, when you start with you know, hot dog buns and um, some sugar and some other things, you have a guy come out with this amazing bread pudding. It's hard not to be blown away by yeah. the creativity and love that goes into it. And that was just emblematic of the whole event last mm -hmm. year. And that's pretty much what it's like now. Everything is, is a communal effort. And usually I don't have to start any of it now. They just, they know something needs to get done. Someone starts doing it. Other people see them. They help. So uh, I'll say it on a camera now. Oh, my God, I don't think I've done this before. It's basically a socialist experiment that they <laughs> for a few days. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that, it's, that big it's S, a little S commune. Word. Yeah, it's yeah, a big it, commune. It, 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 no, it really is essentially a commune. Just mm -hmm. uh, we, we drop in the supplies at the beginning, occasionally resupply during from a central budget, if you will. I just break the checks to people, okay, so I handle, so I'm, I'm the Politburo, <laughs> I, I control the checkbook, but there really isn't a no unless we don't have money, right? Um, because people are very reasonable about their expectations usually, collectively, and things get done. Yeah, and uh, you know, just kind of thinking about um, going, uh, the conversation also that we had a little bit before, uh, um, just kind of switching gears, uh, I know that you're also very involved with looking at, and you've been vocal about, um, equality at the conferences and, and, and seeing a mixed audience of, of people that it's you know, traditionally a, a white, male, young uh, uh, audience at conferences. Is that something that uh, I'm sure you, ha you have an opinion on and, and could make a comment on? Have you seen like a, a change over the years with, with any kind of um, attitude towards women and uh, people who would otherwise be considered minorities at conferences? I, I've seen collectively over the whole of the, the conferences in the Ruby community mm -hmm. a trend toward reaching out more. Mm -hmm. um, Railsbridge um, was, has been around for a few years now. That, that's a, a, a women's outreach group, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen more outreach toward minorities. I, I'm proactively trying to get mm -hmm. more minorities involved, more women involved. It, and it's not that I, I, I shoot for a quota, but I know worthy people. Right. Worthy people. I know people who are passionate who are interested or, and or are extremely talented. And there are a lot of people like that in the Ruby community. Right. So we don't have to bring out representative numbers. We can skew them just a little bit. Why not? Because we're stronger. I'm, I'm a, I've always been a very big believer that we're stronger for diversity. Monoculture is death. And so having more women involved is a good thing. Having more minorities involved is a good thing. More perspective, more disagreement, as long as mm -hmm. it's constructive, is a good thing. OK. And uh, but I mean, um what I was what I was trying to get at is <laughs> is uh, is the um, uh, well I actually can't remember what I was going to do <laughs> but uh, that's okay because that happens every now and then but thank you very much Evan for uh, taking the time to you're speak welcome. with me. Thanks, Mike.